Now today I'm going to try what I call my killer dry fly pattern. This pattern um, I'm going to tie today on a curved hook. It's a size 14 curved hook. Now you can tie it on a standard hook as well. It doesn't make a whole pile of difference. Start off by tying in your tine silk. Come back along the hook approximately a uh, little over half ways. Where I'm going to tie in, I'm using a little piece of antron here, but there's plenty of other materials you can use that will achieve the same purpose. So, tie that down. And then the tie in front and bring it a little bit further forward. Right about there, that should do. Yeah, tie in front of it just to keep it vertical. Back down around the curved hook. And I'm then going to add some dubbin. This is the box of dubbin I have here. With various different colours. You can match the hatch as they say or you can experiment and vary the colours. I'll just grab this little piece here, sort of orange and sort of olive mixed together, I think. Makes no real difference, it's just to try and match whatever flies are hatching at the time. And more importantly, in the right size. So now, dubbing on the, the body. Now, you can use quills if you like, or you can use floss, whatever takes your fancy. Um, quills have become very popular again. Um, I prefer dubbing, it's got a lot more life in it, I consider. Now, here we are. Now, I'm going to use um, this hackle here. You see it's quite long, it's a genetic hackle. It helps if it's long, it makes life easier. As you'll see tie it in there just in front of that post and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around that post anti-clockwise and I'm going to climb vertically each turn is going on top of the preceding one requires a little dexterity as you see it's slipping here now it would make life a whole lot easier if I had my parachute tool but it's gone missing a parachute tool for those who don't know what it is is a tool that helps to hold things vertically such as the post in my left hand so I'm trying to accomplish three th three or four things here with two hands in any case I'm now climbing back down until I reach the hook where I tie in that hackle now Now, trim the hackle. Now basically, what I've done is I've carried the hackle in touching turns up and then brought it back down. So, I've effectively, I have a brush here on top now. So, now I'm going to finish off the body and the, the thorax section of the fly again with dubbing. I'm using a darker color here now, like I said earlier. You use whatever colours you like yourself to match the flies on your local rivers or lakes or whatever you're fishing. And here we are, tying it in and forward to there. Now, let me pull this forward to that position there and we tie it in right behind the eye of the hook and trim that off trim away any little errant fibers get our whip finisher hold everything out of the way 
one with finish and a second for security. And there's one or two little pieces there just in front that I can trim off and then trim the tiny thread. And that's your completed fly. Anyway this is the killer dry fly and as you can see it's going to float very well and it's got a great profile and the trout just love it. I find it extremely good in low water conditions in small sizes. I tie it in size 18s and 20s and I vary the body colours and the hackle to match whatever flies are hatching at the time and as I say you'll catch fish with it any place. That's the killer dry fly.